Hello guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to try to add in another character so that the player can actually see two characters, right, to pick from. We have only one here for now. Let me just uh, duplicate that. And this one will be BP share person character. Uh, this one will be, um, let's check. This one's name is called Queen. Let's find that here, right? So I want to use that as the name. Uh, ooh here to the blueprint or to the template actually so the first one is uh, BP Quinn Quinn maybe <laughs> and the other one is uh, let's check there's another model we can pick which is the male version Manny Manny this guy <laughs> let's compound Save that, and this one will be renamed to BP Many. <clears throat> and so we have Quinn and Many, and we just have those two characters, right? So uh, at the moment, we uh, we're there's a possibility that we can have both, uh, right? To hold some data about them, uh, right? The, what's their uh, name, their icon, those kind of things. Uh, but it would actually be better if those are separated parts. That's uh, kind of like a different definition there. We can define for a particular character selection, but not necessarily having all the data stored on those classes because those are actual player pounds, right? So I'm going to go create a special class to represent a possible selection here. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that here. I'm going to go to the C++ class, US fun here, and make a new class. And this one will be of the type primary assets. Okay, so primary asset is basically a, a type of custom assets. Uh, so something like a texture or a model or something similar in the engine, right? Those are all assets, and we're just making our own type of assets, uh, asset that's representing a character selection. So I'm gonna call this guy um, player or character definition. All right, and create class. Ooh, we're still in debugging. <laughs> Let's see if we're able to jump out of that. Uh, hopefully we're doing okay here. Looks like we're okay. Yeah. Let me uh, close the editor and then Real oh yes okay so character definition here we need to list out a few things we need to know about this character uh, because this is just a data type I'm gonna use public I don't really care about protection for now so you probably oh edit defaults only should be fun and this is gonna be a f name. Uh, I'm gonna call this guy this guy character name name and then we'll have another copy of the U property and this one uh, will be the icon and we can just do a U texture pointer I'm gonna call this guy icon alrighty and then after that we can have another one to represent the actual class uh, T subclass of um, you character, I believe, should be a character <laughs> class, a character should be fun. I'm gonna call this guy um, character class. Okay, and then we can have also a few functions uh, as helper functions, uh, things like I want to know the, the skeletal mesh of the character. So let me make a function to give that, give us that. Use skeletal mesh. <clears throat> Get mesh const. And this function will give us the mesh of the character. We can do that by asking the character class to give us the skeletal mesh component. We need to include a uh, game framework character and then include components and then skeletal mesh components alrighty so the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we do have our character class 
should be having that, <laughs> but doesn't hurt to check. If character class is there, then we ask the character class, hey, what is your mesh? So, um, or we can just return it right away, I believe. Character, character class, uh, get class default object. Okay. And then we need to cast that, of course, into a, a character. It has to be an A character because it's the child class of that. And then uh, we can get skeleton mesh or get mesh, I believe, would we'll just do it. And then we get the. Oh, what's wrong there? We're returning. Oh, we're casting. Casting is okay. Let's do it step by step, okay? <laughs> so A character pointer. Character. Um, let's do CDO, class default object. If we have the character CDO, right, we then do a uh, character CDO get mesh. We should be able to do that, right? And then get mesh, get skeletal mesh asset. This is the one that's of the type use skeletal mesh, and that's the thing we can return. And if not, we return no pointer because then we don't have anything. That should be fun. And uh, yeah, this definition is as simple as this. Uh, if you want to be a bit more careful or interesting, we can also have just one more U property. Uh, let's just have that actually. One more U property. This one is going to be of the type um, UN instance. I'm going to call this guy blueprint. Anim blueprint. Okay, so this one is the one that we can specify a specific animation blueprint uh, that's going to be displayed when we're uh, picking that character. We want to have a display of the character in the UI, right? An, an actual 3D model and playing this animation blueprint. That would be pretty cool. So yes, that's the basic setup for the character definition there. All right, and let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and compile. Oh, this is another one. <laughs> Actually, I just need to compile and run it. All right, I do have an arrow here it's saying that, hey, this one is gone. <laughs> That's okay, we'll have to uh, get it reassigned. I believe it's asking for that in the blueprint. Let's see. So here we have, uh, I believe we're just missing the uh, the character setup. So if we play the game now, we'll be, uh, yeah, we'll, do, we'll be nothing. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, I believe uh, the problem is in the, game mode because we changed the name let's find that game mode uh oh it's uh, probably not a c plus class right it's not it shouldn't be let's see do we have a game mode in here Player start is is in there, and this is the one. Oh, it doesn't make sense. This is a whole uh, entirely blueprint. <laughs> uh, we can fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and create our own blueprint version of the game mode. Uh, so a new blueprint class, and it's gonna be based on the uh, game mode base. I'm gonna call this guy game play game mode. I guess. Uh, I guess while we're here, why don't we just um. I'm gonna make it inherent from the default one there. So the parent class of this game mode will be our uh, here EOS fun game mode, I believe the default one. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we still need to fix our code here uh, because we changed the name of the the actual assets. This is the problem with having to set the reference of a an asset in the uh, C++ because then sometimes when you change the name of the, name of the asset, it's going to be gone. <laughs> the problem is, let me see here. See, that's the problem, right? So no biggie. I'm going to go just delete everything here because I don't need that. And then close the editor. Um, Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna also gonna go here and change the uh, the, the default font class to be BP maybe coin there. 
okay and this will be our default game mode as well game mode and then gameplay game mode that should be fun and now time to recompile all right guys now we're back again let's see we can now test it with the map here and hopefully everything is okay <laughs> so i'm gonna go play the game and are we playing with the queen no we're not <laughs> because this one is now using our game mode. let's change that to gameplay game mode and this should be fun now Alrighty, cool so we do have no problem now and uh, another thing that we want to do is uh, to create our definitions i'm going to go to the third person blueprints so we have two characters i also have two images <laughs> uh, <coughs> Yeah, you can use whatever image you want. Those are the icons, basically. Let me drag those guys in and save them. And so basically, they're looking like this. I'm going to change those texture group to UI and save that one. And this also to be uh, UI uh, here. Alrighty. And we can create our definition now. So we go to the miscellaneous and then data asset and then here we can pick our character definition select I'm gonna call this guy CD uh, many and then here this one will be having a character name many and then the icon will be many and then a character class of course BP many and then animation blueprint don't have any interesting why don't we have any? <laughs> so let's take a look at the animation blueprint. We should have animation, animation blueprint in there unless I have a wrong type. Let's see, uh, character definition, uanim instance. Oh, that's right. This cannot be an animation instance. Uh, this should be a T subclass of, uh, T subclass of uanim instance. Okay, because we're actually passing the class. That's right. So uh, yes, we need to uh, recompile it. I'm gonna go back here, save this for now, and then close this, and let's just try to try, try to recompile this over time. So animation instance is basically what uh, the animation blueprint is. Uh, their naming are different for some reason. <laughs> I believe that's just because uh, it is not necessarily to be a blueprint, although it's called animation blu blueprint um, in the uh, in the editor. Okay, let's look at that look at that one more time so animation blueprint we pick that uh, and then we can do enemy BP many I guess save that okay alrighty so maybe we can make our own because this may not work yeah we'll have to see all right let me just make a copy of that and the second one will be uh, CD Quinn and we just change the naming Quinn and then the icon to be Quinn. Oh, I don't have that. Yes, uh, BP Quinn and animation BP Quinn. That will be it. Okay, so this is how we create character definitions. Basically, it, it's a collection of properties that we bundle together, almost like a struct, but they're stored as assets. So in um, some sense, if you guys uh, are familiar with Unity, this is like a scriptable object. Alrighty, that will be it for this video. In the next one, we're going to try to actually populate these guys uh, on, our, uh, on our UI so that the player can pick one. Alrighty, see you guys next time.